Well, it's a pleasure to share with you some of my thoughts. Uh, this is not the core of my research, but it's something I may do uh, in the future. So it's just uh, small ideas. So this is the outline for my presentation, some ideas. Okay. And this is just the start. These are the distribution for the refugee camps in the West Bank, where I will be talking about, because I can't go to Gaza, and I just focused on some women who were uh, prisoners in Israeli jails um, during different time uh, since the 70s till now. So, uh, Palestinians have been living under the Israeli occupation since 1948, their struggle with the occupation shaped the landscapes uh, of, the, of nationhood, borders, boundaries, and territory in which they live. It also shaped subjects and the, way, the ways in which they negotiate their restrictions on the practices of everyday life. Under these conditions, women are not just an affected witness, they are deeply impacted by the national struggle and take roles within it. Even if these roles are not acknowledged and recognized by the community, these roles reflect sumud or steadfastness in English, especially when women bear the hardship of the political situation and the, uh, and the brunt of the Israeli attacks. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss how the experience of Palestinian catastrophe in 1948 and Nakba influenced Palestinian women and has been transmitted through generations. I, I will focus on how the nostalgic images of the stolen land among women, which were built based on their mother's and or grandmother's stories, can create anger and how the feeling of loss is transmitted to build the political subjecthood for women. That this is risking their lives by deciding to join military groups and the political imprisonment that, ha that has followed. Uh, this paper is based on interviews I have, I, I have conducted with former Palestinian uh, women political prisoners who belong to fig, uh, refugee families uh, and who have grown up in the, in, with the memories of their grandmothers or mothers about their hometowns or villages. These stories create anger and uh, a constant feeling of loss. It has been an honor for me to meet with the, this third or second generation of uh, women from the West Bank um, refugee camp uh, in order to understand how a Nakba influenced uh, their everyday lives. The composition of Palestinian refugee homes. The Palestinian home is a site of complex in interaction between politics, tradition, and social and social and religious practices. It is the space of memories that are produced by experience and reproduced by remembering. Palestinian sumut, steadfastness, which is a form of non-violent resistance, can be constructed by keeping the memory of an Nakba alive and, transf and transferring it to younger generations in order for them to keep the hope of return and to return to their stolen lands. To remember is a way to confirm the illegality and injustice Palestinian refugees have experienced in 1948, and that they have been dispossessed and displaced from their land to diaspora. To live in refugee camps that they, have, they are living in, in to this day, Palestinian refugee homes are the space where memories are produced. Objects that surrounded them are a means to remind them of their suffering created by the establishment of Israel and encourage them to keep memory of 1948 as a form of resistance. As Rita Flesky uh, reflect, home often contains many of the objects that have helped to shape a life history and the meaning and memories with which these objects are encrypted home as in Mary Douglas' phrase, memory machine. She continues, it is furthermore a site in which political subjectivities and social identities are produced and constructed. Home 
is not only a physical space, but also serves as important space for the development and maintain maintenance of identities. The Palestinian home is the first space in which people become political. In Palestinian refugee camps, the home is not, the only, is not only a space of memories of al Nakba, but public space is, is as well. There are many themes presented in, on the streets, wall, in neighborhood centers that reflect the residents', uh, residents hope of going back um, to their land. These themes illustrate the meaning of loss, making the refugee feel that this is not a home, but rather it is a temporal space where identities are constructed and where people are always feel precarious and prepared to return one day in the future. There is a constant rhythm in the repetition of habits inside home and in everyday routine of family members. For Palestinians, politics is something they experience in the details and practices of everyday life. It is in the conversation and social activities, as well as in their encounter with the Israeli occupation on the streets, at checkpoints, and in their own homes and neighborhoods. The repetitive rituals and routine activities of everyday lives are saturated with uh, national themes. Through this routine, Palestinians perform their sumud, and it becomes the motivation of their everyday lives under occupation. Memories inside home that have been transmitted by different generations is the first learning experience of what happened to their family when they become refugees. Sausan from Balata refugee camp grew up in a refugee family, so most of her parents' discussions were about the Palestinian land that had been stolen from them. And for her family's experience of escaping and hiding from the Israeli soldiers, losing her stepmother, who was killed, and losing her brother. This made her understand her identity as a refugee, what it means to be forced to leave her family, uh, to leave, um, I lost, <laughs> her family's land, and then confined in a refugee camp. Sausan's example is typical of participants' narrative as they talked about how they become politically aware of the Israeli occupation. Even though she was born in, early, in the early 80s, she remembers her father's stories and those of the rest of her brothers. Hayam lives in... Hayam lives in a Amazon refugee camp near Ramallah. This camp, wa camp was frequently targeted by attacks by the Israeli military, in part because of its location in front of Israeli settlement, which it comes to any kind of political actions or resistance. <coughs> refugee camps are the first place to start the resistance and to be the center of demonstrations. During her childhood, she developed her political identity and awareness, which encouraged her to start thinking of resistance, resisting the occupation. Women in refugee camp are very political because of the stories they grow up hearing, stories of the lost land and how they have to fight for the right of return. Hiyam remembers how her mother took her to political activities during the first intifada, as you can read her quotation. Women were part of and visible within this collective protest. Their roles in nonviolent and collective activities have often been highlighted in literature. Palestinians also play important roles inside the home in the, constru in the construction of identities. As Hawk, Bill Hawk says and reflect, you can read it there. In the Palestinian context, women take the responsibility of raising children educating them about political conditions, encouraging their involvement in nonviolent activities and providing them with a space of safety even when their homes are under attack. This education is both a means of confirming their own sumut as well as teaching their children how to activate theirs. Palestinian homes inside refugee camp are very small, though the family are usually large. Most of them are divided into two rooms, with some sleeping in, li some sleeping in the living room. 
The residents of these houses do not enjoy much privacy, but, all, but some can be achieved through division of women and men. Hayan had someone, one, of, one sister and five brothers. Her sister had a disability and needed a special care. When the room that her brothers slept in was overtaken by the Israeli occupation forces during her brother imprisonment, the whole family had to squeeze into one room, shattered the little privacy they had. They felt they had become prisoners in their own house. They felt the presence of the Israeli inside their house all the time gave them sense that they, they were continually under control. This strategy of closing a room which has not been documented or discussed in the literature is a collective punishment for the entire family and also serves to warn other activists. This enhances them to keep the experience of their family's displacement all the time and to feel the continuous threat to experience and to live the displacement again. Khawla grew up in a Haitian refugee camp near Bethlehem in the West Bank. She lived with her family of 11 persons in a small house. They suffered from poverty and lost the loss of their land. Khawla's grandmother told her about the Anakba and the other stories about their villages and how they used to own an extensive piece of land and a big house. Khawla always compared these stories of the past with her life in the refugee camp. She said these conditions uh, doesn't give people many options, as you can read. The nostalgia that Palestinians have uh, for um, the stolen land, which they inherit from older generations, incites anger and at their displacement in crowded, poverty-stricken area. Khawla was very emotional, telling, telling me about her village of origin that she had never seen and her grandmother's stories, through her grandmother's stories. She was also very angry about the fact that they lost everything because of the Israeli occupation, becoming refugees in their own land. Her family experience and the frequency with which it was recounted was the basis for her constructed, to construct a strong political subjectivity, instilling and in eagerness to join the national struggle. To keep living and resisting the Israeli occupation, remembering the stolen land and maintaining the belief that Palestinians will get back uh, are very important element of Palestinian sumud. In my own experience of working in refugee camps and listening to refugees' narrative, the people I spoke to kept insisting that to perceive, to perceive their memories and belief is sumud. And that is also confirmed the injustice of the occupation. Palestinian women lose their home, thus losing the feeling of security and the space of safety. Such conditions are fundamental component of Palestinian homes. People feel socially secure inside their homes, yet they're simultaneously feeling the threat of being attacked and invaded. The regular Israeli invasion and demolishing of Palestinian houses make the fear of loss a constant feature of Palestinian home life and people live the, this precarious life waiting for bad things to happen, especially those in refugee camps or people who have experienced displacement. How many minutes are still? Between two and three. What? Okay. What can anger do? <laughs> I will try to rush. Politics surrounds Palestinian women in every aspect of their uh, life experience, so often become politically involved directly or indirectly with which contradicts Sousan's comment that women don't care. When I asked her what women relate, relate about their political views of 1948, the, condition, the contradiction was obvious as she, was discussed, as she discussed her own political commitment, saying, what do you think? I couldn't stand doing nothing and watch. I always were trying to, to help the fighters, giving them shelter, or warn them if the Israeli uh, soldiers were around. 
Sausan's statement reflects that women are active agents and that politics, in, politics, injuries, and loss of the conflict are played out within their homes. The experience of loss changed a great deal of Palestinian women's lives. This recalled Butler discussions, which you can read here, about uh, precarious lives. Experience of loss and displacement create a precarious life for Palestinian women. These different experiences prompt them to start thinking about reactions to calm their grief and to become something else other than what they wanted to become. Khawla belonged to a strict conservative family that placed rigid uh, restrictions on women in order to protect the family reputation, especially as they live in a refugee camp where everybody knows and watched each other. Khawla was aware of all the social surveillance and restrictions, but she insisted to herself that she wanted to be a freedom fighter. This is what she told me. From an early age, Khawla kept searching for ways to become activists and to take roles in resisting the occupation, to get revenge from her reality of living in poverty and being a refugee. When she, when she could have been living in her city of origin and having lands, when she was a student in the university, she sought out the political movements and was recruited to become a freedom fighter, which eventually caused her imprisonment in Israeli prison. The last thing. Prison can be a way of return. These women decide to become politically involved, involved in a, as a way to define their rights of return and also to be part of the resistance movement against the Israeli occupation, which stole their land, as, mo as most of them insisted. Amne Mona was imprisoned for more than 10 years. She always was trying to insist on her right of return. She used to scream on, at the Israeli jailers, we are returning to Palestine. For her, as many political prisoners, the right of return is one of the most important elements of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Their families' experiences and their belief of the injustice they want, went through make it obligatory for them to become freedom fighters, as evidenced by their responses to my question regarding the reason behind their uh, uh, choices. Palestinian women are placed in Hasharon and Damon, Damon prison, both of which are located in Israel outside the 1967 occupied territory. Palestinian women political prisoners have to show their sumud or steadfastness during their time, especially in front of the occupier. This goes so far as to even to show that they do not care about the conditions of the prison. Hanan is a Christian um, refugee from Al Ramle who lived with her family in Ramallah. She was imprisoned in Al Ramle prison. She said, oh, sorry, I wasn't upset when I was in prison. I know it is insane, but I had returned to my city of origin. I could smell Al Ramle from my cell. I was returned even if I was in a prison. This is a strong reflection for, for Hanan, as she was excited to be returned to her city of origin, even when she was imprisoned. The image about her city was built through her mother's and grandmother's memories and experience, which was a way for her to live the freedom of being returned to Aramle, even when she was imprisoned, relying on the imagined, imagined smell that her mother described for her. Conclusion. To conclude, Palestinian women refugees live a continuously precarious life, feeling the threat of being displaced because of the occupation tactics of invading Palestinian territory, because of memories transferred by the different generation of an Nakba. Palestinians have felt the threat, anger, and loss constantly, even without having, exper having experienced the event itself. Palestinian women keep the memory of the lost plan as a form of resistance and steadfastness. For them to remember is to exist. Thank you.